All right. So last time we uh, understood what is moment of inertia, right? Okay. And uh, for that we had to do the derivation of kinetic energy of a rotating body. But I did not make you write about the derivation. So we'll today write about the derivation. So once again, I have a body which is rotating about an axis. This is the axis. Okay, the axis is passing through point O. Now, actually, the axis is uh, like this. The axis is perpendicular to the board, passing through point O. Okay, even though I have shown it, the axis to be like this, but the actual axis is like this, passing perpendicular to the board through point O. Okay, now this body is made up of large number of particles. Uh, let us say there are n, the body is made up of n number of particles, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 n. And the mass of the particles are m1, m2, dot, 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 mn respectively. Okay, so these are the particles that I have shown. Suppose this is m1, this is m2, m3, m4, and so on, and this is mn. Fine. Now, suppose the body is rotating with uniform angular velocity, omega. Now, as this is the axis, as this is the axis, the bodies, the, this whole body will be rotating like this around that axis, right? Okay, so the particle, first particle will be rotating, it will be forming circular motion like this, center over here, center on the axis. Again, M2 will form circular motion, M N will also form circular motion. The radius of that circular motion will be the perpendicular distance from the axis to the particle. So this is R1, radius of first particle R2, radius of second particle and Rn, radius of the nth particle. Okay, so this is Rn. Fine. Now, we know that uh, V is equal to R omega. As the body is rotating with angular velocity, velocity omega, each and every particle will rotate with the same angular velocity omega because each and every particle will, uh, will take the same amount of time to complete one rotation, right? So, uh, the angular velocity of each and every particle is same, that is omega. But what about the linear velocity? Linear velocity of each particle will be different depending on its distance from the axis. More the distance, more will be the linear velocity because we know that the linear velocity is given by r omega, where r is the radius or the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. Okay, so further away, further away the point from the axis, greater will be its angular velocity. Okay. okay, now what we do, we uh, take kinetic energy of each particle and add each and add those kinetic energies, then we will get the rotational kinetic energy by adding all those kinetic energies, right? Okay, so kinetic energy of the first particle will be what? Half m1 v1 squared, where v1 is, is its linear velocity. Okay, and since v is equal to r omega, it will be half m1 r1 square omega square. In the same way, kinetic energy of the second particle will be half m2 r2 square omega square. Dot 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 kinetic energy of the nth particle will be half mn rn square omega square. And we know that kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. We can add them together algebraically. Right? To get the total kinetic energy. And the total kinetic energy of all the particles is nothing but the rotational kinetic energy. And hence KER, R stands for rotational. So, rotational kinetic energy of the entire body is nothing but Ke1 plus Ke2 plus dot 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 Ke n. Now, we have to add all these terms in that we can see that half and omega square are constant. So, I will take half and omega square out of the bracket. In the bracket, what we have? M1 R1 square plus M2 R2 square plus dot 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 Mn Rn square. Now, this bracketed term can be written as summation of m i r i square where i varies from 1 to n as you can see the uh, uh, this number is changing from 1 2 3 4 n so it is nothing but the summation of uh, this product m i r i square so kinetic energy is nothing but half summation of m i r i square omega square and now we have spent the entire lecture last time to just understand what is moment of inertia and we have concluded that this this product over here is nothing but moment of inertia and that is denoted by the letter I and hence kinetic energy or rotational kinetic energy is equal to half I omega square where I is nothing but this term summation of mi ri square is called moment of inertia. 
और रोटेशनल इनर्शिया ओके सो वॉट विल बी दस आई यूनिट ऑफ आई यू कैन सी इट वेरी क्लियरली दिस इज मास एंड दिस इज सम डिस्टेंस स्क्वेर सो द एस आई यूनिट ऑफ मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया आई विल बी के जी मीटर स्क्वेर इज डायमेंशन विल बी वॉट एल टू एम वन टी जीरो गेटिंग दिस ओके फाइन नाउ वॉट इफ इफ द बॉडी हैज कंटिन्यूस मास डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट मीन्स द डेंसिटी एवरीवेयर इन द बॉडी इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो एज ओवर हियर वी हैड टेकन मासेस ऑफ इच पार्टिकल टू बी डिफरेंट एम वन एम टू एम थ्री एंड हेन्स but if the mass is continuously distributed uniformly distributed uh, the density everywhere is same then we can say that each particle has the same mass let us say dm dm uh, indicates small mass so each and every particle over here is made up of the mass dm so the moment of inertia will be what dm r1 square plus dm r2 square plus dm r3 square plus dot 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 dm r n square right and that summation can be uh, written as uh, integ integration of r square dm are you getting this so there will be dm 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 everywhere and r1 r2 r3 will be their uh, respective distances from the axis of rotation and we have to add all the dm r square terms so that is nothing but i is equal to square root of i'm sorry i'm sorry i is nothing but integration of r square dm getting this okay so uh, you just put the heading rotational kinetic energy and then write down consider a body made up of n number of particles having masses m1 m2 dot 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 mn respectively the body is rotating about an axis passing through point o perpendicular to the page as shown r1 r2 dot 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 rn are the perpendicular distances of particles m1 m2 dot 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 mn respectively from the axis of rotation then afterwards you can draw this diagram and then mention kinetic energy of the particles r ke1 is equal to this ke2 is equal to this dot 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 ken is equal to this and after this uh, line you can mention that since kinetic energy is a scalar quantity the total kinetic energy of the body or rotational kinetic energy of the body is then write down ker is equal to ke1 plus ke2 plus dot 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 ken and then you can write down up till here fine then uh, just draw a line and also mention this thing okay now we'll calculate a moment of inertia of certain bodies okay for example let us say a uh, moment of inertia of a ring now we know that the axis of rotation is important its orientation and position right okay now in this case while calculating moment of inertia of a ring so a ring will look like this correct okay Uh, we will consider the axis is passing through its center perpendicular to its plane like this so the ring is like this and the axis is passing through its center perpendicular to its plane so this is a three dimension diagram i am trying to draw or i have drawn over here and the axis is passing through its center perpendicular to its plane from top view you will see the ring like this so i have shown it is uh from top view so r is the radius of the ring now we will see that mass capital m mass is uh, capital m is the mass of the ring and capital r is the radius of the ring now to find out the moment of inertia the formula of moment of inertia is nothing but m1 r2 square plus m2 r2 square plus dot 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 mn r n square now as you can see that the uh, entire mass of the ring is at a distance r is at a distance but it is at a perpendicular distance r from the axis of rotation right okay now and hence uh, each r is same and that is nothing but capital r so that can be taken out of the bracket 
as capital R square because each R square is the same that is capital R square because each and every particle is at a distance R from the axis of rotation and that is constant so R square is taken outside inside what we have the masses of the particles right m1 plus m2 plus dot 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 mn so these are the particles of uh, masses m1 m2 dot 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 mn or uh, if the ring is a uh, uniform mass distribution is uniform uh, each and every particle will have the same mass anyway but in the bracketed term uh, i have a summation of all the particles and summation of all the particles mass of summation of mass of all the particles is nothing but the mass of the ring itself so here i have capital n so moment of inertia of the ring about this particular axis will be mr square it was simple okay now we'll talk about moment of inertia of a disk now what is a disk like what is a ring ring is like a, a bangle and disk is like a chapati that we delete right okay so you know the difference so now we'll talk about moment of inertia of a disk again about what axis about the same axis passing through its center perpendicular to its plane okay and let m be the mass of the ring uh, sorry of the disk capital m be the mass of the disk and capital r be the radius of the disk okay now over here again i have shown this disk into a uh, different uh, from two different views one is this view now again this is a uh, i'm talking about disk not ring okay so i will have entire area over here and i have shown this view as the top view so this is the axis and over here the axis will be how the axis will be like this now we have to calculate the moment of inertia of the disk about this axis okay passing through its center perpendicular to its plane okay now how should we proceed now again this disk i have shown over here from uh, this black ring i am calling this as elemental ring now this ring over here has a very short or a very thin thickness thickness is very small let us call that thickness as dr even over here in the ring we'll say that the uh, ring is very thin the thickness of the ring is negligible even this is not allowed it has certain thickness right so the thickness of the ring is negligible or very small for this formula okay in the same way we'll say that this disk is made up of large number of this thin rings one of the ring i have shown over here in the black color pane okay so uh, i'm calling this as the elemental ring so i'm saying that this disk is made up of large number of these elemental rings rings fair enough okay now the radius of this ring is r smaller and it has very uh, tiny thickness let us call it as dr so the thickness of the ring is dr okay and capital r is the radius of the entire disk right okay now we know the uh, moment of inertia of the ring it is mr square in the same way moment of inertia of this elemental ring will be what dm r square i am saying that dm is the mass of that elemental ring so moment of inertia of that elemental ring is dm r square fine now to calculate moment of inertia of the entire disk i will have to add moment of inertia of all those rings that the disk is made up of fair enough okay now we know that the uh, formula for moment of inertia can also be written as integration of r square dm but we cannot solve this integration na because uh, dm need to be written in terms of dr then only i can solve this integration by using the formula of integration right and hence i will introduce one term over here called as mass per unit area so let sigma be the mass per unit area okay so if i take the entire mass of the disk i will have to take the entire area of the disk so sigma is equal to m what that is the total mass of the disk upon the total area of the disk will be what pi r square right okay because it, uh, this is nothing but the area of the circle right okay uh, mass upon area mass corresponding area if i take the total mass i have to take the total area capital m upon pi capital r square or 
I can also say that mass upon area. So mass of this elemental ring upon area of that elemental ring. Right? So mass of that elemental ring is dm. So sigma is also equal to dm, mass of that elemental ring upon area of that elemental ring. Now how to uh, find out the area of the elemental ring? Now imagine that you cut this elemental ring and stretch it. So after cutting it and stretching it, it will become a rectangle. Right? So the rectangle will have certain length and certain breadth. Length into breadth is the area of the rectangle. That will be nothing but the area of the elemental ring. Now what will be the length? Length will be the circumference of the ring, right? That will be 2 pi r, 2 pi smaller. And its breadth will be nothing but the thickness of the ring, that is dr. So what will be the area of that elemental ring? It will be 2 pi r dr. Hence area is written as 2 pi r dr. Clear? So sigma can be written as mass upon area, any mass upon corresponding area. Complete mass upon complete area, capital M upon pi, capital R square, or mass of the elemental ring upon area of the elemental ring. So dm upon 2 pi r dr. Okay, fine. Now, uh, as I had said that I want uh, the expression of dm in terms of dr, and hence I introduced this term sigma. Anyway, so from here, as you can see, dm will be what? I have to take this term over here. Okay, so dm is nothing but m 2 pi r dr, m 2 pi r dr, this will go over here, upon pi r square. So pi and pi will get cancelled. So I have what? dm is equal to 2, uh, I have written 2 earlier, 2 m r dr upon r square. Fine. Now, area, uh, sorry, moment of inertia of only the elemental ring is nothing but dm r square as we have already discussed we have found out the area, uh, moment of finish of the ring m r square where m is the mass of the ring here mass of the ring is elemental ring is dm okay so moment of inertia of uh, the only the elemental ring will be what r square dm or dm r square right and why i have written it as di because its value will be small moment of initial of the elementary ring will be what? r square dm. So di is equal to r square dm. Uh, and moment of initial of the entire disk will be what? We have to take the moment of inertia of the rings and add them together. That is nothing but the process of integration. So I have written, written over here i. Moment of inertia of the entire disk is nothing but integration of r square dm. Okay? Now as I had discussed, I could not uh, uh, integrate this I wanted dm in terms of dr and hence I have already got the relation over here. So instead of dm I will write this term. So as you can see instead of dm I have written twice mr upon r square dr. Okay. Now we know that uh, constant will be, can be taken out of the integration sign. Okay. So twice m is constant upon r square capital R square is also constant that is taken out of the integration sign. Inside we have what r square into r will be r cube dr. Again, to solve the integration, uh, r r small r will vary from what zero to capital R, right? We have to consider the uh, elemental rings such that I cover the entire disk. So the radius of the elemental rings will start from zero value to capital R value, and hence the integration, the limits of integration will be from zero. To capital R, this small r will vary from 0 to capital R. Fine. Okay. Now we were up till here. Fine. Now uh, we are left with what? Integration of r cube dr. Now we know that the formula of integration is x raised to n dx will be what? x raised to n plus 1 upon n plus 1. Okay. Instead of x, we have here r, and instead of n, I have here 3. So I should get what? r raised to 3 plus 1, that is nothing but 4, r raised to 4 upon 4, and hence uh, by making use of the formula I have got over here r raised to 4 upon 4. Again, the limits of integration is from 0 to capital R. 
again over here at 4 can be taken outside so i have 2m upon 4r square now how to take uh, use the limit of integration we have to put what higher limit minus lower limit so instead of small r raised to 4 i have to put higher limit that means capital r raised to 4 minus lower limit so 0 raised to 4 that is nothing but 0 fine so over here in the uh, over here i will simply have r raised to 4 capital r raised to 4 so uh, as you can see 2 over here in the denominator i will get 2 okay so m r square by 2 why m r square by 2 because I, the, over here i have r raised to 4 in the denominator i have r square so one of the r square over here will get cancelled and i will be left with m r square by 2 so this is the moment of inertia of the disc about an axis passing through its center perpendicular to its plane fine okay chalo. so mention write down these things while writing moment of inertia of a disc even in the bracket you write the same thing axis through center perpendicular to its plane again over here write down mass is capital m radius is capital r and then draw these diagrams and mention the things fine so thank you